one-stop shop for bee bender related videos and unless we're calling Outlaw Licks Volume 1. And uh, why is it called Outlaw Licks? Well, we've got a nice mid-70s Waylon influence uh, Outlaw rhythm going there. It's even got a phaser on it. And, uh, you know, if you like the lick you just heard and you uh, decide to steal it, uh, that would make you an outlaw. Which is about as good as I can do to tie it together to the theme there, because uh, those themes are hard to come up with. Uh, it's better than Hot Lick in E, which was the alternate title. So we're going with Outlaw Licks. And I'm going to walk you through it real quick, make sure it's something you're interested in. I know you've got a little bit of a fear commitment, we all do. And what we're doing here is we're starting off with a, a banjo roll intro, work our way up to neck till we get to the uh, bendy section, where the bending commences. And it sounds something along the lines of this. <laughs> some banjo rolls we're gonna do some hot bending action oh that was the alternate title and if that sounds good to you you ready to get your outlaw licks on go get that bender and let's get right on it well all right looks like you've decided to join in the outlaw licks volume one lesson and it's nice to have you on board let's get started with the festivities shall we nothing better than a few banjo rolls to get the party going in my opinion and by banjo rolls we're talking about this kind of mentality <laughs> Normally I'd be playing that banjo roll kind of with my fingers, kind of getting more of that. That kind of thing. But we're going to slow it down and use a pick and make this a bit of what we like to call in the resort industry all-inclusive. And so this is what we're going to learn first. We're going to take the banjo rolls all the way up to neck to get to our very first bender section. And the bender would start there. So let's knock that out. Now this part is going to involve the top three strings. So take your index finger, place it on your third string, first fret. Now when you got that there, you can down pick starting with your third string and leaving the top two open. It's going to sound like this. Now I'm going to put my palm a little bit there. I don't need this part necessarily ringing out the build up to the roll. I kind of like to mute that a little bit. So I'm just going one, two, three up to the third fret on the uh, third string with my index finger all with down picks. Now when I get there, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna not mute it as much with the back of my hand, and I'm going to pick the third string, third fret with my index finger, pick it once, and then roll up to the fourth fret with my middle finger. After I do that, I'm gonna start on the high E and then go to the open B and do those open. So it's one pick, roll, high E, open, B open. And that's kind of that simulated banjo roll kind of thing we heard in the opening. Now, the next part is just that, just up the neck. So take your index finger up to the third string six. Again, that's going to be one pick there on the third string six. Middle finger comes up to the seventh on the third, and we're going to do the high E and the B string open again. <laughs> Just take a second and alternate between those two, get fluid with them. We'll call that roll one, roll two. Each of those rolls is done twice, and this counts, this is what I mean by twice. That's twice. Now, same kind of mentality, but we're not using the top two strings open anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to take our middle finger, and it's going to be our anchor point instead of our index for this next little roll. That's just going up one there on the G string to the eighth. And when we do that, we're going to pick it and then roll up to the ninth with our ring finger there on the G string. That allows our index finger to fall nicely in place on the top two strings on the seventh. So now you've got this shape, which uh, the home viewers may recognize as what we call the Twain box for the key of E, because we are going to be playing this lesson in E. Isn't that convenient? All right, so here we are again, 
middle finger G string on the eighth, one pick, roll up to the ninth with your ring, index fingers falling on the top two on the seventh. So what I need you to do now after that pick and the roll up to the ninth with your ring finger is hit the B string on the seventh, already covered, come back to the G string nine, and then go up to the high E, which is covered by your index finger, and just walk it down. One, two, three, E, B, G on that shape. So here we are, slow. All right, now for context. perfect time to do some bending for E. So once we come back off that run we just learned, just go ahead and down pick starting on the, those top three, down pick it, starting on your G string and take your bender all the way up. finger covering the top two on the seventh. What we're going to do is we're going to slide that up to the tenth. Bender's still engaged. This all makes sense when I do it up to speed, but for now just take the index finger from the seventh, slide it up to the top two on the tenth, double down pick and on the second down pick let's go ahead and let the bender down. <laughs> Come back to the seventh where you were and then go ahead and hit that and bend it up. still engage. Hop up to the high E with your tenth on your little finger. Pick that once. Go over to the B string which is already covered on the seventh by your index. Hit that once. Hit the high E that's covered on the seventh as well. Come back to the B on the seventh letting the bender down when you hit it. And then end it up with your ring finger back there in the G string ninth. with them. You salt and pepper to taste, that's up to you. Also, when I'm doing this, when I'm coming out of this run up here, remember we've got the bender fully engaged before we slide to the 10th. I kind of let it go down a little bit. That's up to you. Our standard shape there. That's the last part of it. So we're coming out of this. The final part's down here in what we would call our E7 shape. We're going to be working on parts of this, we're just not doing them all at the same time. So I've got my index finger on the third string, third, or excuse me, second string, third fret, as you can plainly see, and that's going to allow my ring finger to be on the high E fourth and my middle finger to be on the G string fourth. All right, so we're coming out of this. That's the first part of it. So when we get down there, Bender's unengaged. We're going to go and have, have our index finger, second string, third. We're going to hit that and take the bender up. Now, high E fourth with our ring. 
Come back to the still bent B there on the third on your second string. Now we're going to go back. The high E is open this time. We've removed our fingers. Now we're going to go back and hit the uh, B string again, still on the third, but letting the bender down. And take it back up. So all together, again, the bender's down when we start this. Practice that. for context. And I am doing that uh, back and forth on the B string and your high E string on that shape pretty quick as you just heard. Alright, so we just did that last little part. The bend is fully engaged. Now we're going to do that last part of the E7 shape by letting our middle finger go on the third string, fourth fret. And when I have it there, see the, the bender's still engaged, I'm going to up pick the second string and the third string now that I've got my finger in place, those two strings to let the bender down. And that completes the mayhem with that three string E7 shape that we've been working with. saw right before you get to that final two notes is pretty quick. Right up and down, back up to it. All right, here we go from context. Volume 1. Make it your own. Play with it. Take the parts you like. Get rid of the ones that you think are dogs. Put them all together. Make it your own. Make it your own Outlaw fun. And uh, there may be an Outlaw Licks Volume 2 if we get a good reception on Volume 1. Part of the uh, challenge of running this channel is I never know, other than cover tunes of Birds and Marty Stewart songs, I never know exactly what the viewers are hoping to have. So if you enjoyed any part of this, this would be a good time to hit the like button. That's one way to let me know. Put a comments, uh, Volume 2, yes please, something like that, just so I'll know if there should be an Outlaw Legs Volume 2, because it is a fun rhythm for me to play over, and it might be fun for you to learn from as well. Uh, it's your first time to the Bender Bunker, welcome, and you may want to hit the subscribe button while you're thinking about it, so you don't forget about us, this would be a good time to do that. There's some kind of bell also, if you hit some kind of bell shape, like we're some kind of cat with a bell toy, I don't know what that's about, but that tells you when the new lessons are coming, just look once or twice a month, that's when I'm putting them out, but you can hit the bell if you want. Other than that, that's about it. I'm going to get on out of here and uh, leave you with the motto, as I always do. It's never too late to go on a bender, and I hope you do. I'm going to fire up the Outlaw backing track, which you may hear again in Volume 2, if you want it. If you don't, this will be the last time you hear it. We'll come up with something fresh. All right, my friends, thanks for watching, and keep it bent. <laughs>